Hey guys, this is Jesse with Team SCG Hobby here. I've got Nick with me and we've got another exhibition match here and it is Josh on blue-black control with Devin on four-color control. Uh, so I, I think we're looking at a kind of more interactive matchup here. Um, you're going to be looking at four-color control playing a lot of haymakers. It does feature some counter spells, but Josh is just all in on the Narset uh, control strategy where he's kind of preventing the lockdown. Uh, it looks like he's at 19 here. And, uh, you know, it, it should be an interesting match. What are your thoughts yeah, on that, Nick? Nothing excites me more modern than seeing two players say flooded strand go. So we already know that we're going to be in for quite not an exciting and not an eventful match, but a fun and intense one nonetheless. See, so. I, I do enjoy these control matchups in modern. It is a little bit, uh, it, it is a little bit more interesting um, than your normal, you know, prowess matchups, in my opinion, just because you get some more interactive turns you know it's both players are planning to enact a strategy whether it be omnath uro or the narset lock but um they have to get there by you know casting some discard spells some counter spells a little bit of ramp it's it's a little bit better in my opinion than a lot of these other matchups that we can watch yeah and the uh, the general rule of thumb with control is the first person to pull the trigger is usually going to be the first person punished in the match that's not necessarily true um, with this matchup because in blue black you have the hand discard, so you at least can uh, get an idea of what your opponent's doing and decide if you want to go for it. And then on the four color control, uh, you have field of the dead and you have uro, which are kind of just free give me, you know, like free spells anyways, right? Um, that don't really affect it too much, but still give you that little bit of advantage. Yeah, and the thing that I think is interesting about it too is that. Uh... You know, Josh's deck is definitely just going to, like you said, cast those early discard spells, uh, counter any relevant spells, but his deck isn't doing anything too proactive apart from resolving a Narset and then trying to assemble the lock and then killing with a Creeping Tar Pit or a, a Snapcaster. I think that's his only win conditions apart from one main deck, Jace the Mind Sculptor. So he, he doesn't have a ton of win conditions as opposed to Devin's list where, you know, he's packing Uros, Omnaths, uh, you know, like you mentioned, Field of the Dead. So he's just trying to, you know, get just jam a threat and roll off of it. And one thing I missed here was Josh actually has the Shark Typhoon to try to get some chip damage in. But um, yeah, I think now just because he knew uh, what was in Devin's hand, he was going more just for the card draw. I don't think the 1-1 one, one is really going to make too much of a difference, um, especially without any Planeswalkers on the board. See, something that's impactful about this, though, too, that the discussion can be made with is... Uh, you know, he does know he has the bolt, so even if he plays the 1-1, one -one, it is just a 1-1 one -one for right now, but um, how much chip damage does he get in before he eventually has to answer it with that bolt, you know? Yeah, I, I think when you see the amount of islands you see on the other side of the board, uh, if you're Devin, you're definitely thinking Jace the Mind Sculptor, maybe Narset. I don't think that one's as common to expect from these kind of lists. Uh, so I think Devin wants to hold the bolt for a Planeswalker, but Josh is trying to kind of convince him to use it on the shark instead i think that's correct too uh josh i don't know if he is aware of josh's list but josh is playing the four narset uh there's been a recent sort of uptick with uh some of these control decks that they're almost calling them the narset lock decks and uh what they really just are is just a straight control deck that's trying to re uh, resolve a narset get a guy reach in play and then after they've amassed enough lands and you know a few counter spells uh, they end up locking you out of your draw step each turn with the Narset in play, and then by controlling the board, uh, you know you just really don't get to play the game anymore, and that's why you end up winning with the Snapcaster, Creeping Tarpit, or the Shark Tokens. Um, so it, it's an interesting development. As we could see here, there's a Narset that's going to resolve. Uh, well, not resolve, but be cast. Uh, and it, it does set up to kind of take over this game, because four-color control, you know, we mentioned this earlier, it plays a lot of Haymakers, but one thing that's great about them is Uro Cantrips, Omnath cam trips, you know, and Narset, since these are all sorcery speed, kind of shuts that off. You know, they don't get that additional value. And yeah, you notice the uh, the static ability is a lot more important than the card draw out of it right now. Uh, Josh electing not to tick down the Narset because he knows about that lightning bolt. Correct. So he would rather, you know, either make Devin use two spells or just keep that static ability in play than to cash in for half of a uh, dig through time there. And that's what is tricky about uh, this deck is that with the Narset in play here, um, it's it's a lot harder for him to get off the board now. I mean, he does have the ability to get zombie tokens to attack it, but he does have to wait till he can get those seven uh, lands with different names. 
Um, apart from that, I mean, it's going to cost him, you know, more than one bolt. Uh, it's going to try to maybe get an Uro and play to try to attack it down. But frankly, it's kind of difficult if he can't mana leak it in the early game. I, I'm not sure. I'm going to look here to see. He does have some cryptic commands, but with him only being on those three lands earlier, that wasn't going to help him out. Uh, he did. He does have three force negations, but he just must not have them in his hand. I can't really tell what's in his hand there. Um, but it looks like it's Josh's turn now. Um, this field of root, sorry, excuse me, this field of the dead could be a problem, but I think something that could really help him out is if he gets one of his uh, field of ruins to deal with that field of the dead, because Josh does play four in his list. Okay, that makes sense with the amount of basics that he has, um, especially since sometimes these blue control decks do struggle with the big mana decks, uh, like Tron, so field of ruins a nice, pretty safe thing. Um, does he run Fatal Push? Is that another reason for... Uh, I believe, yeah, he's he's on the four Fatal Push, okay. um, but he does, he is featuring, you know, oh, I, I'm sorry, it's actually only two Field of Ruin, but uh, there are lists that play somewhere around two to four Field of Ruins because, you know, it's almost free in these decks. They want to be Heavy Island, um, you know, they, they don't have a lot of restrictive, uh, you know, black mana costs in the deck. So they are able to just kind of do it almost as like a, not necessarily a splash, but kind of just, you know, a, a heavier splash for the deck, frankly. Yeah, and it's the more ways of finding swamps you have in the deck, the less swamps you actually need to run. Uh, so between the Polluted Deltas and Field of Ruins, uh, it makes sense if Josh was just running one or two swamp here. Yeah, it looks like he's only running the one swamp, and then everything else is a, uh, a duel. He's running one Creeping Tarpet, three watery graves and a sunken hollow which that's another example of a lot of basics being in the deck is that he can just play that and it's you know it's almost free for him he doesn't have to worry about right, it so it looks like the uh, first bout is going on here so ryan six is being cast on Devin's side uh not going to fight the cryptic command from josh just kind of lets it go um i think Devin's hope is that he has enough of these just multicolored mythics from the past few years that he can kind of run josh out of counters uh, hasn't seen a Mystic Sanctuary yet. I'm sure he is expecting one to pop up soon. Yeah, and here's the thing is uh, Josh has this Polluted Delta here. Uh, I, I would be surprised if he didn't go for the Mystic Sanctuary putting here. Putting Cryptic on. Yeah, because yep, there it is. The thing with Devin's deck is that he, he is at six mana now, so he will be able to double spell Impactful Threats, but it looks like he only has two or three cards in hand, so he's running low on on resources, and I believe the Bolt's still in his hand. Mm -hmm. And the the thing about the bolt is if he like he really needs a second answer for this Narset if he wants to try to bolt it. Um, you know, he is one land away, hopefully, to get this Field of the Dead online. And if that's the case, he can try to make a token, attack and kill. But, you know, Josh does have this cryptic in his hand again, in addition to uh, looks like a force negation. Force he negation. has a yeah, he has a ton of cards. So Alright, so he is a my guess is he has a uh, another Narset. I do believe somewhere I saw lying, him. yeah, and that's why he's taking down the Narset currently. Um, yeah, we do know about the bolt. I. It's weird because the fixing for the four color control deck is actually really good. It's pretty easy to get uh, the mana you need, but that's generally just for one spell a turn. Um, once you get to double spell territory, it's a little too hungry on the different pips of mana. So that's why he opted to keep. Uh, blue blue up so that way whether he has force of negation or not he can uh hold that up just to uh threaten josh yeah i i think that one thing that's really understated about these four color decks in modern right now is uh you know they do get a lot of impactful cards with the renin six uh the uro the omnath but i think something that's come out that really pushes them over the top is actually these triomes um being fetchable in being mana fixing for a lot of these powerful cards uh it's it's really it's just really efficient mana fixing and it's almost free you know turn one fetch find a triome you know on turn one and that sets you up for a lot of your impactful cards early on mm -hmm. yeah it lets you uh growth spiral turn two into you know almost any you could cryptic and uh omnath and one or, turn apart uh, from each other, and that's going triple blue to four different colors. So Right, Ren and Six. I mean, and, and all of this can be done. All of these we're just naming off of even just a single uh, Ketria Triumph. So this looks like an end-of-turn Cryptic Command, Bounce Field of the Dead. I would assume he's drawing a card. Yeah, yeah, it looks like Josh is trying to bait out some form of counter, even though he did do it on Devin's turn. Um, just wants to see what's going on. Uh, 
Josh does tend to fire off cryptic commands rather aggressively, not always saving them for counters. Um, I think he's just churning through to see what he can do. Well, see, so this is interesting because th that that is an aggressive cryptic, um, which does prompt the upkeep bolt on the Narset. But Josh is going to use that force of negation. And I, he does have the second one in hand, so oh, okay, yeah, he has the, the third land there for this force of negation in his hand. And... Always lucky he has another force <laughs> negation if he so chooses. If not, it looks like Inquisition. Um, I think just because of the lack of action that Devin's been playing the past few turns or you know the fact that he's not really fighting back, I'm not too interested in Inquisition here. Uh, I would probably just go for force of negation and try to stop any threat that Devin's playing. Well, because we know that Josh knows that he has the field in hand, obviously, because he bounced it. But does, does he know any more cards? Because he's dealt with... You know, the bold and a lot of these other haymakers early on. Okay, he's going to find Spell Snare. I don't know if that's better than the Force here, just yeah. because he might have an, another cheaper card, maybe like a Remand or something, but I don't know if that's necessarily better. He's a Fatal Push, maybe, it looks like. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think, personally, I would have taken the Force of Negation just because no matter what's going to happen there, he can at least cast it, and he should be able to exile a separate card for free. Well, so depending on whether he has another land in hand or not, he might just be trying to keep up Mana Leak plus Spell Snare or something like that in case um, Devin has two spells. Josh can counter back with two counters. Uh, so it looks like Uro's being escaped here. Not sure if it's resolved yet. Uh, it, 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 oh, it did resolve resolved. because okay, the Field of the Dead. Play. Yeah, okay. the Field of the Dead comes in so that way he can play the Temple Garden and get a zombie. Um, so this can pressure the Narset, but... Uh, the issue here is Josh does have the fatal push for the Uro. That also, you know, that deals with his Uro in play, and and his graveyard's empty, so the Uro is not coming back for a while. Um, yeah, I mean, the Uro did kind of end up um, time walking the one cryptic command because Josh decided that it was important enough to stop him from getting seven unique lands and bounced the uh, Field of the Dead earlier. So Uro just saying, "Well, I'm going to play an extra land anyways," kind of just resets it, and then. Josh is real, or Josh's only real answer for the uh, Field of the Dead is the Field of Ruin. Correct. Um, and, you know, sometimes just having one or two two twos come down every single turn is going to just overwhelm the blue-black control players um, because they're not so much tap-out control, but they don't really have sweepers. It's more just hoping that one-for-one one removal in Planeswalkers is enough to keep the board clear. Yeah, and they do have access to the Sanctuary Lock where they can do the Cryptic Command, um, tap your team, and, you know, buy time and basically say, like, it's like a soft lock. Um, but the issue with that, and something that I personally just am not a huge fan of with these uh, blue-black decks is the Narset Lock is powerful. You know, it's almost a hard lock. There are a couple outs to it. But the issue with it, in my opinion, is that the clock just isn't there. Yeah. So if Devin can just get some value out of, you know, some fetch lands, you know, maybe getting this Uro back online, you know, he, he really needs to try to close out this game. And just playing these, you know, slow value walkers, just they, they, it doesn't end the game. You so know? it looks like we have another aggressive uh, cryptic command here opting to reset Narset, uh, draw a card, and then recast the Narset on his turn to find a Jace. Uh, so we are starting to get the uh, one-two punch of Narset and Jace, which, unless Devin has an answer for, is going to be not so much a threat, but very difficult to deal with um, one and or both of them in See, the long run. And that's what's kind of awkward about that, too, is I, I don't know if you saw the other cards, but it was Land, Archmage's Charm, and uh, Cling to Dust. And both Cling and Archmage's Charm being very good in this matchup, but I think it's a an awkward position that he has to be in because... With his Jace being really his only real win condition in, in, in the face of this board and currently at the moment, I don't think that he has a choice other than picking it there. So that, that makes it kind of awkward. Oh, this is very good. Uh, uh, the third force of negation and the final force of negation in his deck for that Nexus, which is definitely a powerful card in this matchup. Well, you say final force of negation, but you got to remember that he does have the Sanctuary if he wants that instead of Cryptic Command. That is um, correct. Ever. And I think that's why he didn't fight over the Uro with removal. Um, I think he's happy to have Devin control his own graveyard with the Uro and then just you know being able to Cryptic Command every few turns 
at a faster rate than Uro can come out every turn just kind of seems like a good enough deal on Josh's end. Yeah, it, it is a little bit of a, you know, it's not a threat now, but we, we all know that Uro in general coming from the graveyard at any point, you know, he gets a couple fetch lands here, casts a few spells, and then all of a sudden the Uro's online. Um, something to note about the Kling is that Kling in general is just a, a very good grindy value engine against the four color control deck, which is trying to do, you know, all of these really grindy, you know, efficient things. Um, you know, it, it's just a very efficient card for the matchup. Uh, yeah, and it's real versatile because, you know, you see the Uro and you think, oh, you can Kling the Uro. Um, but the other important part of it is you can hit the lands to stop run and six from upticking and getting lands back. Right, and then it also just draws a card off of that, so it's just very good value there. Uh, Jace ends up bouncing a token, so he's just trying to keep him off uh, additional you know, attackers and try to lock this board down. I'm not sure if... I, I can't tell exactly what's in his hand, but I'm wondering if... I believe he has another Narset. Maybe it's just better to Fate Seal... Or, you know, even just Brainstorm there. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. The token does get the attack for two, but even an uptick Fate Seal, you know, gets him up to five loyalty, and then attacking him down to three again isn't that big of a deal, especially when he has access to Cryptic or Force Integration. Uh, what do you think about the Unsummon there? So I think what he's trying to do is he's trying to um, bait Devin into putting as much pressure on the board as he can to deal with Narset, um, or, you know, just using resources towards finishing off in our set. And then Josh can just be like, surprise, I have a second one. And then it kind of resets uh, the whole thing. Although it looks like right now he's just really uh, favoring the card draw instead of the static ability opposite of what he was doing earlier in the game. Well, I think that that information was known because I think on his Narset takedown last turn, he found the next Narset. So I think... He does know. I don't know about this Inquisition. I, I think that might have been three lands, actually. But I was going to say, this Inquisition doesn't seem too great. But if he's going to go Inquisition, take... Oh, Krasis there. He take definitely take Krasis. Yeah, so it looks like Devin was waiting until Narset was dealt with to play the Krasis, and he got punished for it by that Inquisition being flipped off. And can't say that Path to Exile is too many hits... Against blue black control, creeping tar pits the only thing that's coming to mind. Yeah, there's there, there's not a whole lot that I, I think Devin. I mean, it's not like he's. It's obviously still you know almost like soft locked here. But Josh has access to Jace. He's got a polluted delta in play for the Mystic Sanctuary because uh, I do believe he will have. He has more in the deck. Oh no, actually, he has both of his Mystic Sanctuaries in play. So that polluted delta will not be able to get another Mystic Sanctuary. But even then, he has another activation out of the Narset. Uh, he has a Jace online. And really, the only thing that's saving Devin in this game, I think, is having access to this you know, Field of the Dead being online. Well, the nice thing, too, with the Field of the Dead is even the Narset says he can't draw cards. Um, even lands aren't really misses because, you know, getting a 2 2 for playing a land, uh, it's essentially kind of getting an extra card. And when he draws fetches, it's two extra zombies, which either requires two activations of the Planeswalkers or some sort of double spell turn from Josh to deal with those zombies. Yeah, frankly, something that I think is kind of interesting is draws like Omnath and Uro are actually pretty poor. Yeah, that was that was three lands and a snap, so that Narset was, those Narset hits were not very strong these last two turns. Yeah, the easiest way to deal with a bunch of blue Planeswalkers is to try and swarm the board, and four-color control is not really suited to do that. Um, other Field of the Dead decks have prime time which can you know really jump up the amount of zombie tokens that you're getting this deck doesn't really have that ability it's just generally trying to have one haymaker at a time and that's kind of punishing him here against jace and narset who stop him from being able to redraw just you know van vanilla four four sometimes aren't good enough in modern yeah i mean they, they do when they're part of a soft lock they they, they can be but you know vanilla four fours that just really do nothing when they come in yeah they're not very exciting um i guess the land ability on omnath of dealing four to each planeswalker would be pretty good the issue is he's been kind of using the lands to get zombies to fight the planeswalkers so i don't know if devin is gonna think it's worth nope and it looks like it's not worth saving fetches for the just in case if he draws those omnaths yeah because that's the that's the difficult thing um the one thing that we 
sort of missed on. Um, Josh did uptick that Jace uh, and saw a Teferi on top, and he elected to put it on. Let's to keep it on top. Um, but to add to your fetch comments, Omnath just is kind of awkward here because you don't want to sandbag the Omnath in your hand because that gives Josh additional draws to get it discarded, to get it countered. Um, it just gives him too much extra time to try to sandbag these fetches. And even then, you have to leave a fetch, get the Omnath in play, and then play another fetch that you're sandbagging as well. And I just, he just doesn't have enough time. He's got to try to deal with either Narset or Jace here. And, you know, these zombies are getting picked off by these fatal pushes. Um, you know, there's some point here that I, I think you could even, just to, for the sense of preserving time, you could just, you know, concede. But... You know, he's still got to try to fight through and get this, you know, Uro in play. Like Uro's coming back. Yeah, we saw him counting the number of cards in Graveyard earlier. I think he's, I think one, he's one, short. one short, so now he plays the fetch. Um, and, you know, getting two zombies and a 6-6 six, six is a good start for trying to turn this corner again. Yeah, this is actually interesting because although, you know, he's not going to get the cantrip off this Uro, uh, he's going to get two zombies and get the Uro in play. And, I mean, he could just get it bounced by Jace, but... He does get to apply a lot of pressure here just for, what was that, just a Scalding Tarn off the top. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really what this deck does best is, once it gets online, every fetch land is just representing at least four power, uh, feeds the Uro. I mean, if he has an Omnath in play, you know, it just generates mana. This is what this deck wants to, it's showing the power of this deck right here. It's what it exactly wants to be doing. Yeah, and the other nice thing about getting a 2-2 every turn is it is stopping the lock of Bouncing Mystic Sanctuary to get back Cryptic every turn. Um, if he is, or if Josh feels obligated to bounce the 2-2 zombies to keep his Planeswalker safe, then he can't return Mystic Sanctuary with that mode instead. Um, so it is still kind of forcing the hand of Josh, even though it's just playing a land, although he seems to... Be having Mystic Sanctuary come down this show. Oh, no, he takes that one back. So I'm not even sure what he's gonna because he has an he has an awkward situation here where he wants to okay, he's gonna put cryptic on top and then, and then brainstorm it. Okay. So fatal yeah, so push had, cryptic. Is it one uptick? I can't tell if that dies on four or six. I know we had the one fate seal because he wanted it to be out of ones on the attacking range uh a few turns ago. I believe that that's on six because he Tick down, two bounce a zombie, taking it to two. So two upticks would take it up to six. Because uh, he did Fate Seal at least once for the Teferi, and I believe there was one on the prior turn as well. Okay. So he's still a, a, a bit of a way here to trying to do the Jace alt. But, you know, he really needs to... He, I, th I think he kept the Snapcaster in hand, but, he, you know, it's just an awkward... Thing where he just doesn't have enough pressure in play like he's representing like oh i have this i have a half of the lock here i have a jace that's threatening to kill you but once again like we just were talking about he's got four zombies we're well, not four zombies, four power worth of zombies coming in just off of a fetch land if he chooses yeah if i'm josh i think right now i'm either going to continue ticking up with jace just to try and close out the game that way or dig for either the field of ruin to deal with the field of the dead or just find a creeping tar pit uh it's six attacks with the tar pit at this point so that's going to take a while but i think they both knew that well, he doesn't have the tar pit yet for correct this. no he doesn't have a tar pit so that's what i was saying is digging for either of those lands or just trying to get the jace ultimate or really is two options right now that's what's kind of awkward about even this board though i mean his his, his last card hands is cryptic uh, he doesn't have Archmage's Charm to try to dig. He can try to brainstorm with this Jace, but he did just fetch away whatever he had on top. So he doesn't want to necessarily brainstorm lock himself. And if he's going to try to win with this Jace, he needs to keep ticking up with it. So this looks like still in the end step. He's going to Cryptic, Bounce, Narset, uh, draw a card. Uh, was that another Cryptic? Yeah, I couldn't get a look there. But So that was an end of turn one, so he's... I believe this is the uh, third time we're going to see this same Nar set. Oh, he got a so cling. So he is getting value out of it. Cling's very good here. I mean, Cling it... doesn't do too much now because I don't think that Josh is really looking to gain any life right now. And Uro is the only card in the graveyard because he just dealt with Uro um, escaping just a few turns ago. So if he wanted to, he could redraw 
by exiling something from his graveyard, but Correct. I don't really think that's great because then the next time you need Kling, it's four mana and you have to exile other cards from your graveyard anyways. Um, and as you can see with Blue Black, he's a Snapcaster deck and a Mystic Sanctuary deck. So I think trying to keep options open on both of those ends is more important than getting one or two free draws off of the Kling to Dust. Well, something that can be of note for the Kling that it isn't necessarily too poor is that uh, you know, Josh just has a lot of incidental lands in his graveyard. So even if he just draws it as a natural draw, just hitting his own lands, uh, you know, just to cantrip that and get it in the yard uh, isn't the end of the world, especially whenever it's just one mana. Uh, he's looking for additional cards. And if he's not doing anything else with, with right. his mana, I don't think he's really that upset about exiling a flooded strand. So, it's definitely not what he wants, like, wants to be doing, but it's also just something that he can do. Yeah, so this is going to be a big turn for Josh because he found Field of Ruin to deal with Field of the Dead, and he found the Shark Typhoon. I think he's just doing the math of how much mana he has. Uh, for whether he can keep up certain spells while um, while getting rid of the Field of the Dead. And it looks like he's going to activate that now, and Devin is going to fetch in response just to get one last 2-2. Two -two. Um, the Field of the Dead isn't gone forever. I think there's one more run in six that can go ahead and find it. Um, again, yeah. the Kling does kind of get rid of that, but if I'm Devin, I don't really think playing around cling to dust is on my mind or really an option at this point anyways yeah i mean if he if he tags the arrow that is unfortunate but at the same point uh you know this, this arrow i think's not getting him out of this game it's going to be him trying to get more uh field of the dead because no, he does have a second one okay yeah it's definitely if i'm josh i'm definitely going for the card draw plus getting rid of a field of the dead for good yeah we're getting rid of the arrow so notably, and this is where the stack's going to pivot, because Josh has had enough time, he's accumulated enough lands, um, he is just going to let his Narset die, but he has an active Shark Typhoon in here. So this Uro does get the cycle, so not exactly anything threatening because he's not escaping it. Um, right, so it looks like it's cycling again into Growth Spiral. So now that Narset's off, you kind of see... Narset's a what house against color, it. Yeah, you, you see what the four-color deck can do. And here's Omnath with another card draw. So as soon as Nar sets off the table, all of a sudden one card is turning into three different spells cast in one turn, which is pretty good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think Devin's definitely finding a way to f try and fight Nar set for games two and possibly three at this point. I don't really think he's going to be able to turn the corner against a hard cast Shark Typhoon. Um, he's still definitely going to fight because it is possible. It's I just don't really know if he has any way to deal with the Shark Typhoon and... You know, with cryptic commands, it's four four flyers or one fast clock. Yeah, he had a huge window there with Josh being tapped out. Um, you know, and, and seeing all the force of negations. You know, he could have the fourth. I'm not sure if Devin knew that information that he was only playing the three. Well, I mean, two of those spells were creatures anyway, so I don't think force oh, well, of negation was really on the mind. Well, but my my thought process is to answer the shark typhoon. All he really has is the Teferi. So he can go and try to, if he draws it, cast the Teferi there okay. to deal with the Shark Typhoon. But now that he's untapped, uh, that window is pretty much closed. He, he's probably not going to tap down that low again uh, after casting the 6-drop enchantment. Yeah, and so he's at 24. And it looks like a um, looks like a cute thing that he can do once the life total becomes relevant enough and the amount of mana he has. Uh, if he wanted to, he could end of turn cryptic to bounce the shark typhoon to get a four four, and then use the rest of the mana just to make a giant shark. Oh, that looks like instead now that I believe Devin's empty handed, uh, he might have one card in hand. Now he has Gyre Reach Sanitarium plus Narset, which he has cryptic, have doesn't them. he? Doesn't he also have cryptic or no? Who Devin? Uh, no, sorry, Josh. Oh yeah, so um, yeah, so I was saying that, but now that doesn't really matter as much because. As long as Devin has no cards in hand, he will never really be able to draw anything again with oh, Gyre Sanitarium, so it's the end of the game. And you can see it on that end, so they're going to go ahead and go to game two. Yeah, I think that one thing that can kind of save him there is he does get access to Uro, because escaping Uro does um, put the threat in play, but and he will eventually have to answer it, but he at least gets to attack down um, to try to do that there. All right, so... <laughs> 
game one in the books. Uh, Josh taking the lead in the match. Let's go ahead and what do they got for the sideboard that looks good? So the sideboard for Devon is we have an Elder Gargaroth, two Veils, two Aether Gusts, three Celestial Purge, three Cleansing Wildfire, two Disdainful Stroke, one Dovin's Veto, one Ashiok Dream Render, and one Supreme Verdict. So there's actually a lot of nice Ash things Yoke I like. always seems like a good card for these kind of blue X mirrors. I do like the Ashiok. I like the Dovin's Veto. I kind of like all of the Counter Suite, yeah. actually. I weirdly, I'd be on the fence about it. I don't know what I would take out of the four color list, but I think Cleansing Wildfire would be fine here just because, um, you know, the Mystic Sanctuary. So dealing with Mystic Sanctuary and getting to draw a card... Seems like it's pretty good. Worst case scenario, if he does have the seven lands for Field of the Dead, I know that he runs enough basics that he might even be able to hit his own lands, draw a card, and get a 2-2, two -two, and that's not too bad for two mana. Yeah, weirdly enough, I'm not actually sure what we're taking out. I mean, I, I definitely don't like these paths, but I like the bolts for the Planeswalkers. Um, I like the Rens for the value. Te Teferi's probably too expensive, the five drop one. Yeah. Um, maybe Jace. I, I, it's really tough to say. There's just a lot of high value I, I cards. I mean, the paths seem like a pretty free thing to take out of the main. Because, I, again, I don't even think he saw a creature besides the Shark Typhoon for path. Right. And to move on to Josh, uh, his sideboard is one Tassiger, the Golden Fang, spicy, one Ashiok Dream Render, two Ceremonious Rejection, two Dispel, two Eliminate, two Entrancing Melody, a Tail's End, an Engineered Explosives, a Relic of Progenitus, a Teferi's Puzzle Box, and a Field of Ruin. So uh, what, are you, what are you liking here personally, Nick? Um, Dispel, I think, would be a trap to bring in because he does have a lot of creatures that just end the game. I think it's better to just have the more expensive spells that say counter whatever. Mm -hmm. Um... Engineered Explosive seems pretty good because, you know, it stops the zombies. It also stops the run in six he saw. Uh, I could also see possibly Tail's End coming in just because it counters all the Planeswalkers. It counters Uro. It counters Field of the Dead triggers. If that comes up, I don't think he saw Shark Typhoons. But, you know, if you see Blue and Modern, I think it's pretty reasonable to expect Shark Typhoons. And it even counters either the draw or the shark off of that so and I you're talking about tails end for correct. tails end yeah i think it's pretty versatile here okay yeah I, th I also like the tails end in regards to uh the fact that it's just countering a lot of the walkers it counters a lot of the uh creatures because they're legendary i mean it, it just it's kind of just a a two-mana counter spell that just hits a lot of the deck uh, i do like bringing this field of ruin as well it's just kind of free you know you can even just replace one of your other lands that are you know n not as not as great for the deck but you know, even just adding it in to replace an island seems kind of fine mm -hmm. uh, to be able to hit that field of the dead. Uh, what else do I like so here? So the question for it, with Teferi's Puzzle Box, I understand it's in there to work with Narset. Is this the kind of matchup it comes in in? Well, if he wants to be on the Narset plan, I think that's something that he really wants to be... Like, he's actively going to be wanting to bring that in in any matchup where he's going to want to assemble that lock. I just don't know if this is the matchup for it because he does have access to, you know, like Uro. Uh, while Narset does shut down a lot of the, the cards in his deck, Field of the Dead is a problem for uh, the blue-black control deck because if they can't get it out of play with Field of Ruins, uh, any land that he draws is just going to be, you know, putting pressure on that Narset and he's actively going to try to have to deal with it so i don't know if this is technically the narset matchup that he wants but it, it could be you know just an absolute house for it so i'm not 100 percent sure i do honestly i kind of like the tassiger for this deck it kind of outsizes you know the awe maths and the tokens it's good defensively and if he can get it out early it actually presents a pretty respectable clock to try to end the game uh, so I would be interested to see if he would bring that in for this matchup. But apart from that, I mean, Entrancing Melody is interesting because it does get the Steel Uros. Um, but, you know, I, I think we're just going on the hardcore control route, maybe bringing in the Tassiger uh, or the Puzzle Box to try to close the game out quicker. But uh, we'll see what they do. Um, they are going to start resolving, you know, their mulligans here. Uh, Devin is going to be on the play as he lost game one. Um, and we'll see. It looks like they both kept seven. Keeping our flooded strand starts going strong. Let's see if Josh can respect that. Oh, oh my. No, the audacity. <laughs> the sunken hollow. He doesn't even have the basics, so it comes in tapped. But see, I mean, but right here, though, it is, it is kind of fine. He didn't need to cast anything on turn one, and it's just a blue-black dual land right now. 
Uh, so let's see what he's going to go with. Uh, oh. No more Taplin. No more basics for this sunken hollow right now. Yeah, he does have a, a force negation if he needs to use it. But, I mean, th this is actually, though, from what Devin's start is, this is actually really fine for Josh. I think this is exactly what he wants to do. Yeah, it looks like both of them kept reactionary hands. And if both of them are keeping reactionary hands, I think blue-black control is going to have a little bit better time um, just because, you know, they're going to have a lot more just engines going in the late game. Oh, it looks like Josh wants to uh, take the first stab at resolving a spell. This is interesting to me, uh, specifically because Josh does have a force negation, but there's a lot of like these haymaker-y things that he's doing with Uro and Omnath. And this is a key turn here with potentially an Omnath where... He may just be able to... Oh, actually, you know what? I'm sorry. He has double blue, so he won't be able to Omnath this turn. Uh, but Josh tapping down low, you know, can represent, you know, a threatening turn from Devin. And it is possible depending on what land... If Devin has another land, um, because he has the double blue, he... Even though it's Island Island Flooded Strand, he could run in six and then keep up a Mana Leak or something like that for the Force of Negation... Um, I think at this point you just kind of have to assume that your opponent has the force negation and try to sculpt your game plan around that. This is interesting because he's going to play an untapped Temple Guard and leave up that fetch land. So uh, this signals something like Cryptic. cryptic yeah. Um, Josh is going to play an untapped Water Grave, take two. Um, but it's just a lot of reactionary turns, like you said, that we have here. And the first person to... You know, Josh did play that Ashiok, and luckily he wasn't punished for it. But, I mean, we're just waiting for somebody to play something. Josh has a whole suite of, uh, looks like a Kling, a Cryptic, a Force. So he's got a lot of reaction cards here. And uh, it's a little deceptive, and I don't think it's going to come up super early. Um, Josh does have three islands on top of the Mystic Sanctuary. So if he is uh, waiting on a Cryptic, since he does tend to be more aggressive with them, he could bounce that and try to get some sort of redraw out of the cryptic since it would be pseudo free um if you go draw a card bounce my mystic sanctuary yeah that's an excellent point so he's going to fetch shock Devin. that is for a steam vents uh, and he is going to go for that ren like you mentioned so i think he's telegraphing a mana leak here potentially he's going to go for the cryptic it's going to go so for the stainful, stainful stroke. stroke and that was one of the cards we talked about on the sideboard i think it's very good for this matchup uh you know, it hits the Cryptic and hits the Jace, but it looks like we're going to see a Force for... Uh, which one's getting Forced here? Looks, looks like, like the, the Disdainful, disdainful Stroke. Right. Um, I guess just... I think it's more relevant if a an Instant or Sorcery gets exiled than a Planeswalker for anything going on in the graveyard. I don't think it's relevant outside of Uro, um, but it's just one of those small 99% doesn't matter, but the 1% could kind of plays. Yeah, that's what I was trying to think because uh, it doesn't affect Kling. It doesn't affect anything else that I can think of in Devin's list here. I'm going to just double check. but Yeah, I think if I'm Josh and I don't know the deck list, if I'm seeing blue, um, I don't think he's actually seen a Cryptic from Devin yet, but the amount of blue that they have in this kind of shell... Snapcaster could make sense. Right. So I think he's just saying, just in case, let's get rid of the instant or sorcery. And that's something that's interesting about the four color decks is that since they have so much, you know, easy mana fixing for the deck and they can cast so many of these cards, really, Devon 75 could contain any kind of, you know, wild sideboard piece. You know, we, he doesn't, he might not necessarily know anything that he's going to bring in here. Uh, but we're going to see a cling on, it looks like the Force, force Negation. negation. Uh, that Sanctuary is going to put that Cryptic on top, and Josh is going to draw it off of that cling. So, a pretty powerful turn, and I think that's one of the things that's really powerful about cling, is that just being the one-mana cantrip there, hitting something in his yard to hurt Uro and just draw a card off of it is just powerful enough. And uh, he has the Field of Ruin for whenever Field of the Dead comes down, and then I believe I saw Mana Leak in his hand as well so that's why uh, he was being a little patient looks like jace the mind sculptor is coming down with mana leak back up in case there is a cryptic or force of negation he also has dispel so depending on how the turn's gonna go he can even telegraph maybe a fatal push or something here but uh josh is just really set up to just start taking away this game now we have mm -hmm. a jace uh fate seal he's gonna keep that card on top 
And how telling is it for what's going on with Devin that AJ the mind sculptor isn't being fought over? Is that actually relevant here, or does Josh not really care about what counter spells are in Devin's hand? Well, here's a few things that we should look at here. Um, first and foremost, we have uh, a blue black control deck that is up on lands despite being on the draw. Uh, Devin does not fight over this this Jace, which is very threatening since the deck can't deal with Planeswalkers very well without Field of the Dead. And, you know, he I think there's a an, an Hour of Promise in hand, um, but he's just, he, he does, he's not applying enough pressure, and it's just giving Josh so much time here. Yeah, and I... And there's a Mana Leak for I the Hour. Hour of Promise is kind of rough, because if it resolves, like, sure, you get to zombies to try and deal um with jace and or whatever the rest of the board is but it Mm -hmm. doesn't really do much except get him more mana when he's low on resources anyways and if it gets countered it's just devastating you spent five mana to skip your turn yeah he already had the the field so it's not like he's tutoring for the field here which is you know something that's very good about that card uh and at this point he gets field of ruined uh he's lost his field of dead it looks like he has two cards in hand and it's just kind of a rough spot for the deck um yeah really this match really seems to be uh who draws more cryptic commands and with josh's ability to put cryptic commands back on his graveyard or get flashback with snapcaster it really just kind of puts him in the driver's seat of the match when i think that's the problem is i i think this deck just sits closer to you know almost like a mid-rangey strategy because it has so many of these haymakers and control is just kind of eaten up on that with all of their counter spells that they get to play you know, Force and Negation hitting a lot of their Planeswalkers to get value, while Cryptic and, you know, Kling and Fatal Push dealing with the rest of them efficiently. And Narset just really holding it all together by not letting any of those cantrip. It's just a tough spot to be in. Now, it does look like Josh does find the Creeping Tar Pit. That's very good to try to close this game out. He, he's got the Jace to try to fight through here and get card advantage and hold off his draws and the Tar Pit to finish. Oops like omnath yeah so yeah, <laughs> when you see him pulling out lands one by one it's usually a good tell that it's omnath right trying to come down oh there's a veil uh, and josh doesn't have enough mana here actually to dispel that veil so right, this omnath's so, gonna resolve yeah, and no narset down so he gets a draw off veil and a draw off omnath um i think if he gets a fetch land he can almost deal with the jace uh or at least put it down to one counter but it looks like he wasn't lucky enough to draw that fetch land did he draw i don't think he drew off of one of the i don't think he drew off the veil i think he did one of the slick little let me draw two with the same hand movement sort of thing well he had three in hand he had two last turn correct so three maybe he did draw another one all right and narset just a little bit too late but you know still gonna get him uh, some card advantage at the very least be able to redraw well something oh, never mind there's oh, a wow. force negation coming down yeah because something that's interesting here as well is a gyro reach or a puzzle box after bouncing the omnath specifically puzzle box though uh he just gets them locked out and yeah and i mean the crazy part is you know we're back to 2016 standard with a dispel coming out uh stopping that force negation i think like we've been saying all match, the Narset is just huge game here. Uh, with or without Gyre Reach or the Puzzle Box, it just kind of turns we got a, a lot of Devon's spells into just vanilla creatures or do nothings. For anyone who was not aware of that card, that was the Tails End that we were speaking about earlier, which is the two mana instant counter target legendary spell, activated ability, or triggered ability. So, very key for this matchup hitting a lot of these a lot of these uh, haymakers here so he bounces the omnath and he already activated the narsa he's just going to pass okay and i think by bouncing the omnath here um josh is saying go ahead and cast it again i probably have a counter spell for it well he does he has the tail's end oh yeah so um because i feel like even if it did resolve he already saw that there wasn't a land drop the prior turn so it's not really likely that he's going to be able to sweep the board with the omnath if it resolved anyways and frankly he has he has three in hand i believe he's not getting the cantrip off the omnath so it's just the four mana four four 
Um, you know, he's going down to two lands by even doing that, and that's if he wants to even fight over the Somnath, which realistically it's just the four mana four four. If he really wants to, he can just bounce it with Jace. I mean, it's it's just not enough to play. I, I think Narset being in play is just so huge and being able to keep it around against his four color control and with Josh having four and able to protect them pretty you know pretty well, it's just a house here in this matchup. Yeah, I really think the uh, four color deck needs some help with the uh, fifth color and black for things like Abrupt Decay to really deal with Narset. Yeah, what 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 else can what else can we get access to? Trophies very strong as well, just an all around answer. Um, you know, just really anything that I mean, can. Yeah, if your base base blue secondary color, I think in this deck would be green uh, with Uro Growth Spiral, Omnath, uh, green black is just let me deal with any permanence in play. Period. Mm -hmm. um, so those kind of things are good. But abrupt decay, Josh wouldn't even be able to fight over uh, whether Narset goes to the graveyard on that one or not. Another card that could see play would even be something like Bloodsheath's Thirst because it's like a pseudo push that deals with walkers. It seems like this deck just does not have a great way to deal with the walkers if, if they can't get the Field of the Dead online. Yeah, I think the uh, four-color game plan is generally, let me play one thing that is so overwhelming that you spend all your resources dealing with it, and then I'm just going to you know play a second overwhelming force once you just kind of one threat at a time and... Any deck that can only play one thread at a time is really just weak to cards like Mana Leak or Cryptic Command yeah. that are looking to either get an advantage on the mana cast uh, during that bout or just being able to draw extra cards while countering your spells. Yeah, this deck that uh, I'm not sure if it was originally uh, made by Canister, but it, it does seem like it does really prey on these Uro piles in modern right now. Uh, I was going to find an Archmage's Charm off this Narset. And say uh, just fancy divination nine times out of ten. I think it's most likely going to be a divination here as well. Yeah, I mean it. it it's really efficient at what it does. Um, being able to steal, you know, these one drops like you know Death Shadow. Being able to steal tokens, Shark Typhoon tokens in these matchups. Um, looks like we're going to get a Cryptic Bounce draw that's going to get dispelled. So that's just efficient mana right there against that Cryptic Command. So we'll get a draw, I believe three cards in hand still. And we know one is Omnath. No Uro in the yard, correct? No. We have yet to see an Uro this game. Or he's gonna say, right. how many, how many, how much can I tap this for? Counting with the fingers, so it looks like we have looks like we have a lack of abundance of tokens for some reason, but but it's it, like a 5-5, five, five, five. so as of now, it's a three-turn clock unless Uro or Omnath come down with some life gain. Well, if he chooses to, it could be a two-turn clock. He does have that Creeping Tarpet from earlier. It's hiding under that stack of lands, but it is it is there. So he can choose to make this a... You need to do something next turn, but he's going to elect not to. He's going to brainstorm with Jace. Draw, look like Field of Ruin, Fetch Land, Blood Chief's Thirst. Is that Field of Ruin? Yeah, that's okay. Field of Ruin. It looks the like new the art. Uh, Theros art. Yeah, I think I like the play of just attacking with the 5-5 five, five flyer. Um, as you've seen, the, really, the only real interaction um, from the four-color control is going to be the Planeswalkers trying to bounce the shark or Path to Exile, which I imagine came out uh, post-board. So I think it's with the amount of card draw you're getting from Narset and Jace, and just everything else that draws cards in the deck. I like just keeping as much mana open as possible just to really narrow down what Devin can do to get out of this game. I'm curious to see what he has in hand, because he's down to eight. He's going for Mystic Sanctuary that he's not going to be able to draw a card with, which is going to be Cryptic. So he needs to have something this turn, especially since he's trying well, to get this Cryptic. It could him. also be something... Oh, that was, oh, so that was end of turn. Okay, I was okay. going to say Growth Spiral also he could do on the... Um, upkeep or something like that of Josh's turn, draw the cryptic, and then counterbound something like that. He surprisingly actually has enough blue to do that for this four-color deck. Oh. Yeah, the red is really just for uh, Ren and Six and Omnath, and then the white is mostly for Omnath and Teferis. They're generally pretty light splashes. Um, not too often you see the basic planes actually come out of the deck, uh, but it was there just because of that field of ruin. Is he on four bolts? He does have bolts. Okay. He is on four bolts. Okay. 
So yeah, but that but apart from that, you're totally correct, and he does have the cleansing wildfires on the board. But yeah, they, it, it's interesting how well they can splash these cards. Uh, so if we had a Jace activation this turn, huh? I don't believe so. Okay, I think it was just oh we have had one. Okay, it's interesting to me that he doesn't want to try to end this game as well though, because he knows he has cryptic. But I mean, if he he has a force. He could have actually cast the force there. Again, yeah, I see a bunch of different blue cards. I think he's just on the plan of let this 5-5. Five five. Just end the game. Yeah, let this 5-5 five five kill my opponent. I'm only going to counter things that gain my opponent life or get rid of this 5-5 five five on board. Right. So, I mean, he has a few cards in hand. I just the, the Notably, the Narset is not in play. So if he has things that can trip like Omnath or Uro, he can try to cast them. Um, if he casts Uro, he goes to six, dies to the tar pit and the token anyway. Let's see, is that's five mana? We already saw that. All right, so he's fetching down to two. Okay. That's a Tarn, I believe, so just another so getting, island. Yeah, because I was going to say there could be a chance that it's just too many different colors going on, but if he's getting a basic island, well, I guess he couldn't get a shock land. Yeah, that's the thing. He, he's stay alive. He's locked into Mountain Island there, so it's oh, oh it's for crisis. The Hydra crisis. Two mana up. Oh, and he has the Tails End from earlier to counter the the presumably the gain life and draw card. It looks like yeah. I th my guess right now is he's asking whether the gaining life and drawing cards is the same trigger or not. Well, it's the same line. It's all within the same line box, so it would be yeah. So that it's um, I think he was seeing if he would have to guess which one to counter, and it looks like he doesn't have to make that choice, yeah. and that's going to be the uh, game two zero in Josh's favor. This has been Team SCG Hobby. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.